right, but right. I don't know if you want to chime in there. <laughs> yeah, about incentivizing, yeah, yeah, greater production or more specialized production, whether it's farming or manufacturing. I think what Javon just said makes a lot of sense. But we found a lot of ins and outs, and I think one of the things we need to delve into is, hey, we had farmers like, for instance, the Abaco bird. Mm -hmm. We've had um, um, uh, Mr. Minas in Grand Bahama that was growing um, chickens as well as, as, as well as eggs and so on. Mm -hmm. We had Rainbow Farms right there on, Kamaiko, on Cowpen Road that was producing eggs. And we had Gladstone Farms, which we all know, mm -hmm. that was probably the, the largest producer of chickens here in the, in the country for quite some time. However, they were finding that their cost of production was just so great I'm not sure whether or not we had sufficient subsidies from government to be able to keep these things ongoing. So I think it's more than just government, but it has to be government, a mixture of government and private sector mm -hmm. to be able to cause this to really be, this has to be a union that is shared by all. Mm -hmm. It just cannot be one section that takes on the full brunt of this mm -hmm. to cause this to be a going concern because this is our food security for the nation and for those who visit us. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think if we begin to take those types of things on, we would better be able to find better means of being able to bring to market and see where our pitfalls are and be able to correct them as we go. Um, we won't get it all right the first time around, but mm -hmm. I do feel that once you begin to put these things in play mm -hmm. and begin to put the logistics, as Javon alluded to earlier, um, in play, we begin to see exactly the ways towards the right direction to, to the ultimate goal that we're trying to get to, which is more of a food security. And we would not be at the, at the risk of really, depending on that, looking for that boat to come in to shore mm -hmm. with that treasure called food, mm -hmm. which it should not be a treasure called food when we could produce it ourselves. That's right. And so, so in terms of making more readily accessible, I think yeah. you mentioned this concept of a marketplace. Yeah. Right. Right. So you're talking about, we're not, not talking about like a, a physical marketplace. You're talking about a virtual one? I'm, or talking, combina I'm talking about a combination, combination of, of both. A combination of the two. Fantastic. Combination so two. how would that work? And, and, so, and how would that really help us with our archipelagic <clears throat> makeup? So if you look at a Milo Butler Mar, um, that's going to be your, your brick and mortar that has the storage capacity to mm -hmm. store certain produce. Um, it'll be one of many in the network, along with other local grocers who uh, have decided now that we really want to support and endorse our local farmers. Right. You now take entities that are into the digital platforms, in the digital spaces. Um, I won't call any, not to be biased. Mm -hmm. um, and you say, hey, I want you to build out marketplaces where I can connect the farmer to Mr. Butler's store. Mm -hmm. All right. This currency is, is moving across this digital platform. So the farmer's happy, Mr. Right. Butler's happy, and now it's just going to the boat. You have the boat in the equation, they're happy. So now you're connecting all of the dots, all right? Mm -hmm. And this is happening at the touch of a finger. Um, it isn't a new concept to us in the Bahamas. Mm -hmm. Every Bahamian, well, let me don't exaggerate, but the majority of Bahamians at some point in time, either themselves or a family member, have shopped on Amazon. So we understand e-commerce. Well, my mind went straight to Amazon. Yeah. We went to e-commerce. Yes. And, and, yes. and, and, and it's interesting because Amazon has done it so well. When you hear marketplace, synonymously you think Amazon. Mm -hmm. you know? um, but that's the way we have to start thinking. Right. Uh, and it's so, amazing the fact that we are, we are an archipelago, an archipelago yeah. that we have not actually thought of this sooner. Because here it is now. Our design just sort of just lends to that sort of service on right. an ongoing basis. Mm -hmm. You know, another thing I would also see coming on straight <coughs> too would be slaughterhouses. Because not just to look at um, um, food supply in terms of fruits and vegetables, but look in terms of livestock and where they can be grown. Mm -hmm. um, grazing in a southern island is Rum Key. Mm -hmm. I understand that a lot of cows are actually grown there on, on Rum Key. And it was actually an excellent place for grazing mm -hmm. of cows. So mm -hmm. if you were to use cows and say some other things, that there goes your beef. Mm -hmm. So all of your your steaks and so on that we, we use. We're not a very big market for beef, but whatever market we have, we can actually help that market by growing these animals on those remote islands, so to speak, and being able to use that to be able to do exactly the same things. And the hydroponics, being introduced those those islands out there, like the Ragged Islands and so on. We spoke a few years ago, I think it was something that was presented on 60 Minutes in reference to sourcing of the sun's energy yep. and being able to use Ragged Island as a means of being able to do that. So why don't we use the same set of technology, not just in Ragged Island, mm -hmm. but other remote islands to do the same sort of thing and be able to get what you need to do to produce the vegetables and fruits. Have your boats regularly go to these islands to be able to pick up or pick up slaughtered animals 
that are, that are produced locally, mm -hmm. have them store that particular thing and bring to market as you need be. Those are the ways in which putting that sort of logistics into play that Javon spoke about um, to come to market and get into where they need to go. So whether it be here as the final destination, mm -hmm. being New Providence, and you know, this is where the populace is, mm -hmm. or exporting, exactly. or using at hotels. Exactly. Has, has Milo Butler as a group or organization ever gotten into the farming space? We were in the farming space to some for, yeah. for, for a number of years, uh -huh. and we were producing some items. However, there again, not having that level of commitment all around mm -hmm. made it very, very, very challenging. Right. Um, but that was the whole intent. We wanted to get into that space. Um, we were trying to make ourselves virtually integrated mm -hmm. and to really come from the ground straight on up. Mm -hmm. We are looking at, looking at some other means of getting into it again okay. um, in livestock. Um, but we're, we're going to see exactly how that actually pans yeah. out. So we have never lost hope of that being a means by which that can happen. We still believe that that can happen, and we're right. trying our hands with it right now as and, we speak. And one of the things that we, we've always recognized, and not just mm -hmm. Myla Butler and Sons Limited, Myla Butler Distributors, Myla Butler Mart, um, as a nation, we have done well being merchants. Mm -hmm. Okay? We have done exceptionally well being merchants. Mm -hmm. At some point in time in our nation's history, we're going to be 50 next year. We have to think like manufacturers. Okay? Mm -hmm. And not just from an agricultural standpoint. Anything that we do, mm -hmm. we have to think that we are going to produce the product or the service that's going to be used at a domestic level and then scaled and exported globally. That, right. That's a paradigm shift. Uh, the younger generation gets it, but now it's connecting their ideas, their vision, their passion mm -hmm. with the right funding. Okay? Yes. And gone are the days where we can say, well, the government needs to do this, the government needs mm -hmm. to do that. We are the government. I don't know about you guys, but you know, I, 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 I satisfied with the taxes I presently pay, <laughs> okay? <Right. laughs> so I don't know if I need those to increase any longer. Right. But let's now go out there and speak with venture capitalists. Let's go out there and find um, the private, the PPPs, you know, um, to see if there's an appetite for investing in these types of ventures. Mm -hmm. I think there is, but usually the individual with the, with, with the funding also had the idea. Mm -hmm. And the individual with the funding is now realizing, and thank, thank God for media, they're now watching things like Shark Tank, they're realizing, hey, I don't have to control this process end to end. I can just be an investor in someone else's vision. And I think that's where we are right now. You know, mm -hmm. um, it was in a conversation over the weekend, I heard an interesting stat. Uh, a lot of the new farmers are females. You have okay. more females getting into farming than males in the past. You know, the old stereotype that uh, our farmers are 60 years and over, that, that's subsiding. Mm -hmm. But everyone is doing it in isolation. We have to build a marketplace. The other so, thing so how, how do you bring people together? Yeah, Sorry. go I, ahead. Bringing people together, but before you begin to bring them together, I think we also have to start from young too, eh? Mm -hmm. I think, and then we started to do a lot of that um, in some of the schools. Um, right behind Milo Butler Distributors, mm -hmm. you have um, D.W. Davis. Mm -hmm. That has been growing chickens for quite some time. And then you also have backyard farming being done by other schools like H.O. Nash and some of those other entities. And it seems as though they reach a particular pocket and then it stops <clears throat> and there is no additional funding being given. So perhaps another thing that can also happen is maybe some of us businesses adopt a school, mm. adopt a program yes. and begin to see exactly what is, how does these things actually look coming to market and then begin to have discussions with the students and the mm. teachers on what was good about the product or what was not so good about the product mm -hmm. so they could begin to fine tune and begin to give us the information that hey what do you do now need to do or what sort of funding do you now need to make this a going concern mm -hmm. so that we can now see a younger farmer be it male or female mm -hmm. coming up and they also coming up with the solutions to the problems that we face in our country in our archipelago mm -hmm. of not being able to meet those needs so i think that is the way in which we try to bridge a lot of this and cause it to happen, starting in, from the very, very, very young age. But I think oftentimes we tend to have a drop and there's no picking up of that and that individual is no longer seen doing hardly anything in farming. But there are people who love it and I think for those who love it, we ought to embrace their love for it and cause it to come to fruition. Absolutely, I, mean, I, I think that that's obviously the, you know, a, a good starting point, right? Um, start young and build a foundation. Mm -hmm. But in terms of the, the full, full execution, connecting all the dots between the businesses, the government, and um, 
really um, making sure these, the marketplaces uh, are fully supplied. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of heavy, heavy lifting to be there done, is, right? There and is. you mentioned um, bringing in the financing, right? Yeah. The, the right funding sources. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any ideas how that can be, how, how that can be structured? Well, I see, I see PPPs, um, because we are familiar with PPPs in the country, I see that mm -hmm. um, being utilized. Um, yes. I also think that some of the existing um, venture capitalists, some of the existing um, corporate service providers, some of the existing businesses that we always look to for smaller scale investments mm -hmm. can probably start to move in that direction. Um, see. You mentioned, you, and I, I cannot um, leave out the digital platforms because I think that this is a great opportunity for digital platforms now to get into these types of funds mm -hmm. um, where they can raise that fund, that, that, those funds globally. Mm -hmm. But you mentioned the heavy lifting. Maybe I'm an optimist. Maybe, maybe we as a family are optimists, right? There are only 400,000, 500,000 people in the Bahamas. There are 8 billion people globally. All right? We have to change our mindset and have a paradigm shift of stop, stop trying to be the big fish in a small pond. Mm -hmm. And if we work together collectively, right, we can get there quicker than required. Mm -hmm. So I, my, my cousin's passion, that's 25 years of let's not make this political. Okay? Mm -hmm. um, let's all sit at the table. Let's fully map out what needs to get done. All right? Let's have BAIC, BAMZ, the, the private sector, uh, um, um, the technical sector, the farming sector, have them all come together. When I say private sector, I'm talking about the grocers and distributors. Mm -hmm. And let's have the conversation. Great. All right? And in having that conversation, we may be surprised that we can get to where we wish to be sooner than later. You know, as the old expression goes, if you want to move fast, move alone. But if you want to move far, move together. Tremendous. On that note, I think that's a wonderful, wonderful place to close. Um, but Alan, if you have any final comments, I'd, I'd, I'd allow you. The, the only comment I wanted to add to that was the same model that we use to try to um, influence getting tourists here or to encourage banking. Mm -hmm. We ought to use a similar type of platform to begin to increase our food footprint here in the country and being able to get that. So whatever logistics we use to try to cause those individuals to be um, to invest in our and uh, whatever courses we had there, I think it ought to be a similar type of thing that we use to cause this, this food distribution to actually happen. You're right. It's not. It's never been a hard sell getting tourists to come here. Right. No. No. Right. No. And we, we have the resources. We know yes. what they they um, want. And so a matter of giving it to them in the right way. Right? Exactly. Indeed. Indeed. Well, thank you so much thank for you, joining Mr. me, Jones. Alan it's a Butler, as well as Javon Butler. Uh, really, really was an interesting conversation. Um, I know everyone benefited tremendously and are thinking a bit more deeply mm -hmm. uh, about how we can secure uh, the food in this country. Exactly. Right? So thank you very much. Pleasure. And thank you to our viewership for joining us today. This episode of Jones & Company was brought to you by Milo Butler & Sons Distributors as well as Agio Digital. Thank you and have a wonderful evening. Okay, so we just have small talk now. For the, sorry, I'm being host now. Yes, <laughs> just for the right. credits, I don't know what's going to last. <laughs> no, but, but, but um, 